Good morning, good evening, good afternoon everybody. Hope you're all doing good today. My sunburn's absolutely fine. It didn't, uh, it didn't affect me at all. I've, my skin's quite tough actually. Uh, I'm used to it down here. Right, let's get down to business. The Curse of Riven Rock. What is Riven Rock? I'm sure a lot of you already know. That is the name of the estate. Uh, where Harry and Meghan's mansion is. I always thought it was an unusual choice for them to buy somewhere like that. Um, as soon as they, they said they'd bought it, and whether they live there or not, I know some people have emailed me. Not that I'm up to date on my emails at the moment, so steady guys. Um, but some people have emailed me in the past to say they live near there and they walk past and it looks very, very run down. It has a very interesting history, this property. So as soon as they said, oh, you know, they bought this, whatever it is, $18 million mansion, I looked it up. And I looked up the history of Riven Rock. And there was very, very little on the internet back then about it. Um, there was a bit about the McCormick family and it, how Elizabeth McCormick was, um, a philanthropist and fought for women's rights, a woman of power. And her husband Stanley, who was actually the money, had gone kind of crazy and lived in a building at the bottom of the garden and his mother watched him through binoculars. And that Elizabeth was a strong woman who was trying to cure Stanley of his illness. And I thought, wow, I bet there's a lot more to that story than meets the eye. And so there is. Isn't the internet an interesting place? Isn't it fascinating how some things seem to be scrubbed from the internet when we all know we saw something that was there that is not now and how suddenly things come to light and are allowed in Google searches. It's almost as if somebody is losing favour with Alphabet, Google and YouTube, or perhaps not paying the bills. Now, the internet being cleansed brings me to another point. I think it was yesterday's video I mentioned that I saw Harry very arrogantly brushing this man's hand away from him going to shake Meghan's hand. And one of you said you'd looked for it and you couldn't find the clip. Well, it's not there. I can tell you, I looked about a year ago and I couldn't find it. Now, you can find plenty of clips about the first Endeavour Awards she went to with him. She's wearing a black trouser suit. The incident I saw happened as they were ascending the staircase. All of the clips on YouTube now are very viciously and cleverly edited just before that happens. I personally believe because when they were in the palace system then, that was the palace staff protecting them, which they have done nothing but complain that the palace did nothing to protect them. And as I recall back in the day, the palace did plenty to protect them. So that's just one example of things being scrubbed from the internet. Of course, things are never scrubbed. Things are never scrubbed. The internet is there forever. It's just a question of browser searches, but websites are still there. Um, right, the McCormicks. Now, I'm gonna put a link in the description for anybody who wants to read this for themselves. It's from the National Archives. I have been gripped reading this article this morning. The comparisons are stunning and horrifying, actually. And as I suspected when I read first about the McCormick family, yes, there's a lot more that meets the eye. In fact, there was a huge court case played out on the world stage, world press, that apparently even drowned out the crash, the Wall Street crash. That's how big this thing was. How the hell could I only have just found that today when I was deliberately seeking it out when they bought that man mansion? And it wasn't there. None of this information, I couldn't find any of it. So the McCormick family, keep it short, they invented a thing called the Reaper. They're from Chicago, multimillionaires. 
um, and the reaper is like combine harvester. So that's that's where they made their money. There was a gazillion siblings. There's a lot of the McCormicks. The youngest son of, I think he's called Cyrus. Well, you guys can check all these facts for yourself in the, the link in the description below. Um, so if I've got anything wrong, that's that's where you go to check it. I think the, the father was called Cyrus and his youngest son was Stanley. Stanley was Ivy League. As I understand it in America, that's a big thing. He was the captain of the football team. Uh, he was intelligent. He was articulate. He was a big member of the family. They, to me, come across as a close-knit and quite a happy family. Uh, and then along came a spider. This is my interpretation of Elizabeth McCormick. He married Elizabeth McCormick and suddenly became mentally ill. And he never got better. And she claimed she wanted to cure him. Um, so she instructed a couple of doctors called Dr. White and Dr. Kemp. They spent a lot of time with him. Admittedly, these two doctors were being paid enormous sums of, sums of money. I mean, by today's standard, I think one of them was going to get something like $50,000 just for a house call. So, yeah, yeah, my cynical side says perhaps doctors spin things out. But that doesn't appear to be the case with Dr. Kemp. Dr. Kemp believed in therapy, talking to Stanley, getting Stanley to explain why he had strange rituals. For example, apparently he washed his hands in the toilet. Um, he carried his slippers as if they were puppies. Um, he had all kinds of strange rituals. And Dr. Kempf got him to talk about it and explain what was going on. It would appear Stanley had memories of childhood traumas, which just reading the story on the face of it, they seemed like quite a normal functioning happy family, the McCormicks, before Elizabeth came along, so I don't know where the memories of that came from. Oh, also, Elizabeth, before she married him, she had a, I think she had a degree in biology, and she wanted to go on to be a doctor, and she was really into studying chemicals and chemical effects on the body and the brain. Yeah. Let's not forget, when you live with a spouse, you have to trust them completely. Food, drink, what you're consuming, suggestions of, for example, light and sound baths, hypnosis. Um, a lot of you also have sort of said, no, I'm not blaming Megan for all of it because I think Harry had problems before. Look, which of us don't have problems? We all have problems. And anyone who thinks that, honest to God, you've obviously never lived with a narcissist or had one in your life because I have and they drive you crazy. They, they drive you to do things that are so out of character. So all I can go on is footage of Harry before Meghan and after. And to me, it's as clear as a bell. That chick has driven him insane. Not that I'm drawing any comparisons between Stanley and Catherine and Meghan and Harry, but it is interesting that they chose to buy this property. Uh, it's a bit like going out and buying the Amateurville house, isn't it? or the famous Enfield poltergeist house in North London. Oh yeah, let's go and live in a house where some guy went, wife drove him crazy and he lived at the bottom of the garden. Oh, and he was a multimillionaire and guess what? She got to keep all the money. You know, it's a weird ass place if you ask me for either of them. Well, <laughs> I don't know, maybe that's exactly what she was looking for. But uh, I think from Harry's point of view, why, not, why the hell would you want that kind of, of thing and it, it's so well known it's so apparently well documented although being a long time ago long before I was born and I'm guessing before a lot of you guys were born uh, we wouldn't have heard the story unless there was the internet and I didn't hear the story until today because apparently somebody cleaned the internet before when they first bought the mansion things change don't they so anyway yeah Elizabeth was really into you know medicine shall we say dr kemp made a lot of progress apparently with stanley and in this link below you'll see newspaper articles and actual archived letters between dr kemp and elizabeth dr kemp very quickly formed the conclusion because what they did is they created a, a board uh, of like trustees to look after stanley's money and his mental health and well-being 
That board consisted, I think, of Elizabeth and a couple of his siblings. His siblings were on the side of Dr. Kemp. He very quickly formed the conclusion, Elizabeth is dominating. She is winding Stanley up. When he's near her, he's ill, he's miserable. And when she's away, he's just peachy. And his siblings went along with that as well and said, funny you should say that, we'd noticed that too. But Elizabeth being the wife, that's a very powerful thing, a marriage certificate. Uh, there was a big court case and she won. She asked for sole custody of Stanley and all his money so that she could do all her, her treatment for him. Um, and although she won, the court said, well, actually, we're going to add some people to this board of councillors. So it won't just be Catherine and a couple of siblings. They're going to be the deans of some eminent medical schools. Anyway, poor Stanley, he died in the end and Elizabeth got all the money. It's a fascinating story. And there is a book which I think is loosely based or based on the McCormick st uh, story. And it's called Riven Rock. I haven't ordered it, but I might. Um, and I mean, Elizabeth and the doctor just didn't get on at all. The doctor was, he was, you are making him worse. You are making him ill. If you love him, cut him loose. Sound familiar at all? So <clears throat> that's, that's my thing for the day. And then I'm going to get on with painting my boat. It continues. Um, and also a lot of you have said that Harry was jealous of of William and that when Diana ran on to Britannia and hugged William first and then Harry that Harry kicked William well I've watched that video again and I can't see that and also I'm going to put another clip in the description which is interesting it's of Diana William and Harry when they were little and they're dressed up as soldiers and she's holding Harry towards the end I think the time stamps about 220 221 and she says come on in William and William's sulking and no 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 don't want to go in and she says oh don't worry then Harry's gonna get all the love and affection and William very jealously goes no and comes running in so that's just little kids that's little kids I wouldn't hold you know a little kid doing something when they're little like driving it was a toy car according to Paul Burrell's book it was a toy car that Harry was racing down the hallway of one of the houses and he banged into the shins of one of the uh, staff whose job was to stand still and Paul remarked and said you know I was really amazed that the guy stood still because it must have really hurt but Paul didn't depict it in the book that Harry was spiteful so I think really I mean and, and, and I really hope none of you are living, I know some of you are, but I really hope you've escaped or you've healed from being with crazy people and narcissists. But I mean, this is coming from me. I was once dubbed Britain's Most Wanted by the Daily Mail. Uh, I was on the run from them and Steve Skerritt from Sussex Police. And I ended up in that situation largely because I had had some pretty nasty, evil people in my life and a lot of uncharacteristic stuff went down. That, so people, things can really look different on the surface. Add to that if someone's putting something in someone's food, someone's drink, they are receiving hypnosis under the guise of sound and light baths and it's gonna relax you uh, and filling with false memories, you can very quickly drive a person crazy. Oh, that's another thing Elizabeth McCormick did. Soon after she married Stanley, she separated him from his family. They moved to Boston initially, and it wasn't too long before she popped him into a mental institute. So, I mean, those things, I know people are angry at things that Harry's done and said, and yes, he's been a total wanker. That's English for a strong word for idiot but uh, he's not the sharpest tool in the box. He really isn't. Um, I do think he's naive, he's vulnerable. He's, he's, well, he's quite thick, really. I'm sorry to be blunt, but he is extremely thick. Um, and when someone like that is isolated and then God knows what's going on on top of that. I mean, these are just my thoughts and opinions, you know, do your own research, guys. Do your own research on the McCormick's.
What the hell? Would you buy a property where all that went down? I don't think I would. Anyway, as always, thank you very much for listening. And I look forward to reading all your diverse thoughts and opinions and your free speech. Long may it last.